So if you're married at the time of your death, your spouse will automatically inherit from your estate under the intestacy rules, but they won't automatically inherit all of your estate. If you have no children and your spouse survives you by 28 days, they will take everything. But if you have children and your estate exceeds £270,000, then your spouse will take your personal chattels, they'll take a statutory legacy of £270,000 and one half of the residue with the other half of the residue passing to your children. So if that half share of the residue exceeds the nil rate band of £325,000, then there could be an inheritance tax uh, bill on the first death. But whilst the standard position is that marriage revokes a will, I'm definitely not saying you should wait until you're married to write your will. A solicitor can draft your will so that it's written in contemplation of marriage, and this will involve including a special clause within the will to make it clear that the person making the will expects to marry a particular person and intends that the will should not be revoked by reason of that marriage. Making a will in contemplation of marriage will ensure that your testamentary wishes are fulfilled should you die before or after your intended marriage. So aside from making a will, what else should you be doing while you're waiting for the big day? So my second suggestion, and it might seem a bit silly, is to get married. As the rules on weddings become more restrictive again, and Nazi's already talked about those in some detail earlier, many more people are making the difficult decision to postpone their weddings until they can have the party that they've always dreamed of. But from an inheritance tax point of view at least, you may wish to consider getting married now and then celebrating that marriage uh, with your family and your friends when restrictions are sufficiently lifted to allow that celebration to take place. I say that because if the worst happens, even with sound inheritance tax advice, you may end up with an inheritance tax bill on the first death if you're still unmarried when you die and your estate exceeds £325,000. If you are married at the time of your death, all assets which you leave to your spouse, either under the terms of your will or under intestacy, will be exempt from inheritance tax. So if you have assets worth a million pounds and you leave them all to your spouse in your will on your death, then there'll be no tax to pay. But if you have assets worth a million pounds and you leave them to your fiancé on your death, then there'll be £270,000 of tax to pay. And that might mean that your partner is forced to sell their home to pay the tax bill. Married couples are also able to take advantage of the transferable nil rate band, which is not available to unmarried couples. If I take you back to the Frank and Angela example I ran through earlier, I can explain how that will change the inheritance tax position. So looking first at the left-hand side of the slide, if Frank dies first, um, his estate will include the half share of the house, his share of the savings and investments, and once we've taken off his nil rate band of £325,000, there's a potentially taxable estate of £225,000. But as all of the assets are passing to Angela, they qualify for spouse exemption and there's no inheritance tax to pay on Frank's death. Angela then dies 10 years later, She's inherited the property share and the investments, and her estate then now includes the whole value of the house, all of the savings and investments, and that's totals, that totals £1.1 million. From that, we can take her nil rate band of £325,000, and we can take Frank's transferable nil rate band of £325,000. So that leaves a taxable estate of £450,000 and a tax bill of £180,000. So you'll see that this achieves the same inheritance tax bill as in the second of the two earlier examples, and I've replicated that on the right hand side of the slide here. But as Frank and Angela are now married, they can achieve this result without the use of trusts and payment of the whole, in uh, whole inheritance tax bill is delayed until after the second death. So is there anything else that you can be doing then to protect yourself before your wedding day? My final suggestion for the day is a declaration of trust. Um, if you own property jointly and you don't have an agreement in place setting out exactly how you own that property, you could end up in expensive litigation trying to determine the correct percentage shares belonging to each of you and to your partner. You should therefore consider whether you need to enter into a declaration of trust. This declaration of trust can be used to reflect unequal contributions to the property or simply to set out your intention that the property should be owned as tenants in common, which will allow your respective shares in the property to pass under the terms of your respective wills. A declaration of trust records each owner's intention as to the ownership of the property, so it's clear what proportion of beneficial ownership belongs to what owner. Whilst you remain unmarried, a declaration of trust is also useful to set out how the property should be dealt with in the unfortunate event of a relationship breakdown before such time as you make it down the aisle. 
So to summarise, coronavirus aside, reviewing your will or making your first will should always be on your to-do list in the lead up to the big day. It might not feel very romantic, but you'll want to make sure that you and your loved ones are protected both now and when you're married. Everyone's circumstances are different, and whilst I've tried to touch on a few common themes today, you should take advice from a solicitor about how best to achieve your wishes. You should review, you should review your will um, or your lack of will at the time of any life-changing event, and marriage is certainly one of those.